basics with InDesign uh, CS4. Um, I'm going to just show you guys how to package a document for a printer. I know this comes up a lot when using InDesign. Especially with businesses, um, deal with a lot of different kinds of printers. Some of them might want a PDF, some of them might want the actual InDesign document. Um, and this is really the best way to go about doing it. For starters here, I have an image of Photoshop. I'm just going to show you a little bit about the image. Uh, the resolution is at a little bit over 300. <clears throat> That's probably really not necessary to be 304. My rule of thumb, and this is just from my experience, 150 uh, DPI is okay you know that's that's more than uh, adequate um, and then 300 dpi you could do something like for a billboard that's just been my experience uh, with images um, for layouts and even for a billboard you can go 50 percent some of these printers uh, will say yeah send this over the file but you can make it half um, because just because the file size is so big you don't want to spend two days uh, loading a file to an FTP. Not really two days, but you understand the time is uh, considerable. So let me close this out. Um, we're going to go to uh, image and then mode just to show you. It's a four color CMYK, uh, this picture. And when I send things out for a print, I like it to be four colors. Um, some people, you know, online have read articles where they say they'll they'll print images at three colors or they'll use JPEG and all this kind of stuff. I like a four colors uh, TIFF actually for my images, um, and I learned that from a former director of mine, and um, that works out pretty well. And I've been doing that for years and years now. Uh, four color TIFFs uh, for high resolution images that I send to magazines. Um, that's why I like, and it works perfect. And I like to stick to what works. So let me take the box here, the picture box. I'm going to open up the box here. I'm going to do Control D, and I have an image on my desktop. I call it Ring CMYK, and CMYK stands for cyan, excuse me, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Um, and let's take that image. And if you notice, the quality is not really perfect. I know it's hard to tell over the uh, computer here, but it's really not that perfect. InDesign has something called a memory dump. Um, and what it does is it enables you to use a lot of images and work really quickly, which is very helpful. But if you start working with people that look at images on your computer and they see the quality is not 100%, they're going to start asking you questions about it. So what you want to do is, while it's selected, and even for your own sake, if you're retouching or anything like that, you want to go Object, Display Performance, and you want to select High Quality. And there you go. There, there's your High Quality. And it looks perfect now. Um, I can do Control P and that'll take us to the print. You can print it off a printer um, that you have or you can create a PDF this way. I'm gonna cancel that. Um, I'm gonna put in some text here and I'm gonna show you what happens when you package a document in design. We'll call it test and we're using Times New Roman here for the font. Um, we go file, package, and this shows me a summary of what's going on with the document. That's including uh, images, um, how many fonts were used. You know, down here it's going to show you uh, Times New Roman was the font that we use. As far as the images go, let me just move this window here. We have a, a, a little bar here and it says links. And um, there's my image. Now, if you're working on a network within a business, Sometimes files are moved. It's just the nature of the beast. You know, sometimes you're working with a lot of people, they don't know you're working on a project, and um, an image gets moved. Over here, you'll see a question mark come up if you move the image. Um, if not, if, so, if you do an edit to it in a program and you have it updated within design, within InDesign, you'll see an explanation point. Um, and that's what the links area is used for. So you want to make sure your links area is perfect before you package a document. Because what happens is you might have edited an image and you might forget that um, you didn't update it within InDesign. Very important because the printer is not going to be doing any updating for you. Um, so you want it perfect before you send out. So let me click on package. And it's asking me publication must be saved before continuing. Save it now. It's asking. I'm going to save it. This is the information um, as far as the instructions and the and information about yourself you want to give before you give it off to the printer. I'm going to leave that alone for now and continue. And we're going to create a new folder. We'll call it beta. And let's package it. And I'm going to minimize this. 
and I'm going to show you what InDesign outputs. Let's open the folder. And here we go. We, we have a, a fonts folder, a links folder, instructions, and an actual InDesign document. Inside the links folder is my image, ring CMYK. And we're going to go back. And in the fonts folder, we have the Times New Roman font. And this is great because what happens is, is that your printer is going to need all the materials when they're sending this to a print. And InDesign does it one nice easy step uh, to get all those materials together. Very organized and very uh, simple. And that was a few things in InDesign CS4.